My name is Shupriyo and I need your permission. I need your permission to get married. Me and my partner, we are in love. We are together. It's been 11 years. We are living together. It's been 11 years. My parents love my partner. And most importantly, we wanted to get married. And today, I need your permission to get married. It sounds funny. It sounds not very realistic. But that's the fact of this country. So we met in 2012 through a dating site and we went for a date, our first date. We planned for one hour, which extended for seven hours. And in the very first day, we kind of realized that we meant to be together and uh, we kind of ready to invest to our commitment. And uh, then we, within two months, we told our parents, we met each other's parents few months we moved in together and I know it sounds very Bollywood it sounds very dramatic but that's how we have started we literally grew together we had our good days bad days our agreements to each other's disagreements and then 2020 COVID happened 2021 the second wave, and we know how terri terrible that was, and we both were COVID positive. We understand one thing due to COVID, that life is fragile, and we decided to get married. We decided to tell everybody in this world that we are together, and we are happy together. We called our people, our family, our friends, colleagues, students, and we did a ceremony. We wanted to call it a marriage, but the whole world called this Telangana's first gay wedding slash commitment ceremony, because in this country, we are not allowed to get married. The next is, why marriage? <coughs> Why anybody wants to get married? It's not about gay or you know, heterosexual marriage. Why anybody wants to get married? Marriage has a very significant place in our story of Indian civilization when we think about policing love. We try to find the answer, and we got the answer, many answers. One answer was marriage is for procreation. Well, I don't believe that. I believe marriage is for companionship. Marriage is for security and dignity. So if I answer why marriage, there are two aspects to it. One is the legal aspect to it. Another one is the social aspect to it. So when we talk about legal aspect of marriage, Legally, marriage brings a bundle of rights. I will explain. Think about it. I have a life insurance today. Can I make my partner as a nominee? No. For instance, if something happened to me today, can, my, can I leave my property to my partner? No. Right? Can we buy a life uh, health insurance together? No. Can I call my partner as husband legally? No. Right? Basic. If I go to a bank, can I open a joint account together? No. Right? We are the most important person for each other's life. And in the eyes of law, we are strangers. So this is... For instance, if I die today, my partner doesn't even have 
the rights to carry out my funeral. And that's the first part to it. When we talk about the second part, which is again very important, which is society. Society places, marriage places a very, you know, a proper, a very strong role in our society, in our, you know, in aspect to our Indian culture. So if somebody asks me, are you, I mean, somebody asks anybody in that way, are you settled? Mostly that implies in our country, in our culture, are you married? Secondly, if somebody asks me, are you married? I still take a couple of seconds to think and decide, shall I say yes or no? Because legally I'm not. Suppose I'm filling up a government documentation and I still need to check mark as single. Right? And we are tired of being treated as a second class citizen in this country. We are not hurting anybody. We are not taking away your rights. We are a citizen of this country, rather a responsible citizen of this country. Then why to be treated as a second class citizen? There are people who opposes our marriage by saying it will create havoc in our country and in our society. My question is, what is society? For me, for this generation, society is, we live in a bubble. We, we have a set of friends group, we have a set of colleague or the relatives or family members and we meet them in regular basis. For me, my society is my parents, my extended family, my friends, my students, my acquaintances. I wouldn't say they accepted me from the day one, but they learned about it. They accepted us today and they cherish about it. When we talk to the young citizen of this country, they also aspire to have a successful long-term relationship along with their success in their career. And, and I'm pretty sure you all can connect here. In that note again, so when we are talking about marriage, marriage provides security for this young generation. Marriage provides mental support, emotional support. And through marriage, you can build a life with someone you really love. So our country has been through a huge transformational journey of LGBTQ rights. Since 2009, the Delhi High Court, NAS Foundation judgment, we got, we got first time, we got decriminalized. We all celebrated, I was in college back then. A lot of people came out from the closet, proudly, confidently, loudly, and from there, 2013 judgment from Honorable Supreme Court, uh, cautious judgment, where we, they recriminalized us. We were living together, me and my partner. It was one of the terrific moments where a lot of people had to go back to the closet. We suddenly become criminal in this country just for being ourselves. And from there, 2018, Johar judgment by, again, Supreme Court, where finally we got decriminalized by striking down 370's Article 377. From there, today, 2023, we are waiting for that historic moment of this country where we are waiting for a landmark judgment on marriage equality, again from Honorable Supreme Court, which is Shupriyo versus Union of India. So our journey has never been standing out of the crowd. It's always been get lost in the crowd. Growing up as a queer child, we learned one thing, which is pretend to be somebody else to fit in. To fit in, not for a day, for every moment, for years to decades, just to reduce humiliation and bullies. 
And we strongly believe that we want to do this for, for us, for people like us, and for the millions of people in this country. We are the privileged one because we survived. We are the privileged one because our family supported us. We are the privileged one because you accepted us. So if we don't fight, who will? Somebody must do it. So a lot of situation where people ask what you're expecting from the judgment and I keep saying we have everything to gain and a lot at stake. It's not a journey, it's not a mere battle for one day, it's for years to generations. From 2018 onwards where we are standing, we did, we came a long way but yes we have a long way to go. And from this whole journey Shupriyo has learned a great deal, which is a boy from a small town in West Bengal, a very, very humble and timid background, can ask, can stand up and ask for the basic fundamental rights to the world's largest democracy, which demonstrates that everybody in this room has the immense power to stand up to ask for rights and demand what you deserve. And most importantly, you don't need anybody's permission to love. Thank you.